Hi everyone, I'm Shannon Aducci, FN Style Director, and welcome to our Footwear News Achievement Awards Red Carpet Pre-Show, brought to you by The Style Room, powered by Zappos. I am here with my co-host tonight, Deputy Editor Sheena Butler-Young. Sheena, we're here in the I'm flesh. I'm so excited to see you, Shannon. It's I'm been nine months. It's been a long time. Other than virtually, but I'm so excited to be here and I'm with you and with all of you at home, right? Yeah, we're doing this virtually. This is our all virtual award show this year for 2020. Uh, but we wanted to make sure that we gave our viewers an inside look at some of the biggest fashion and style moments from the people who are winning awards yeah. tonight, from the presenters. We have a really big list of huge names tonight. Oh, I'm so excited. This is really our biggest awards yet. It is. It's an unprecedented year and why not have an unprecedented night, right? It in is. In a good way. In a good way. We should toast. To the night. We should toast to the night. To the 2020 FNAA. Cheers. Cheers. So let's get started talking about um, some of the bigger award winners tonight. For sure. Person of the year is pretty much the biggest award, one of the biggest awards of the night. Yeah. That is going to Aurora James. She is the designer of yeah. Brother Valley's. She's also the founder of the 15% Pledge. Amazing. You know, Aurora is getting this award because she took something that was so difficult, right? For, for the, the black community in particular, we, and I'm talking about the death of George Floyd, which really led to a heightened national conversation around race, around uh, equality and justice in, in, in America. And she said, hey, you know, black people make up 15% of the United States. Why don't you dedicate 15% of your shelf space to black brands, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that such an inspirational story? We need inspiration this year. And I think Aurora's story from beginning to end, from starting Brother, Brother Bellies in 2013, is so inspiring. One of my favorites, they're all my favorites. We don't have favorites, right? But we're giving uh, the, the Icon Award for Social Impact to Dwayne Edwards. I say Dwayne, but I think it's properly Dwayne, um, who is the founder of Pencil Footwear Design Academy. I mean, three decades of just building a pipeline into the footwear industry for young black men and women. I think that's amazing, right? Let's talk about Designer of the Year, which is another yes. really big award. And this year, yes. we chose someone different. And he's so exciting. I think he's the most exciting thing in footwear design right now. Salehi Benbury, who is, he is the footwear designer men's for Versace, but he is also doing these collaborations New with Balance. brands like New yeah. Balance. He's also a big hiker. He's making hiking boots look chic yeah. and desirable. He went on a hike with his pal, Jaden Smith, who we will see yes. um, is presenting the award to him and we'll have to check that out. Oh, I'm looking forward. It was to a it. lot of fun. Yeah. Now we're gonna go to our digital director, Charlie Caballo, who is in LA. Hi, Charlie, we miss you. Hi. Hi, Charlie. Hi, I wish I could be there. So I put a red carpet under my feet just to feel special like you do. I love it. We miss you here and you know, we had so much fun last year on the red carpet. I was thinking about who was my favorite person to interview and I want to know what your, who yours was. I love Paris Hilton. Uh, she walked in just, yeah. <laughs> she was so bright. She looked like a chandelier. You know, another person who I fell all over when he finally walked the red carpet was Billy Porter. And I was so excited to talk to him. Charlie, what do you remember from that conversation that we had with him? Um, you know, just one of the things he learned was just sticking true to yourself. Um, having self-confidence and feeling empowered with how you look. I was really, I mean, when she when she walked, I mean, she's super tall, she's a supermodel, Adriana Lima. I asked her, how did she learn how to walk in heels? I was expecting to hear something like, oh, my mother taught me when I was young, but apparently she learned from Brazilian drag queens. We have a really great Collaborator of the Year oh, yes. award winner this year, one of the biggest moments of the night. You happen to be wearing I their am. shoes. This was a collaboration between shoe designer Amina Mawadi. She is like the hottest shoe designer. She got Designer of the Year last, last year. year. Yeah. And she collaborated with Rihanna. 
Rihanna has had like such her own moment in fashion. So to kind of see them like merge together for this for this is amazing. And the shoes have been like so well received. They're they're so they're good looking shoes. Let's talk about shoe of the year, the Nike Dunk. This shoe has had so many iterations, so many lives, so many interpretations, and it's really left its mark in the sneaker community. The Kylie Jenners love this, yeah. the Travis, Travis Scotts love this, and when, they, when they're spotted, these shoes will go on StockX and be $20,000 easily. So let's talk about company of the year, right? Deckers. Deckers, this is the parent of Ugg, Hoka, Sanook, Teva. This company is on fire. I don't on think fire. people realize just yeah. with those star brands, yeah, Ugg, which everyone wears Ugg and has continued to wear Ugg. Yeah. And we just see Ugg how- Ugg season is upon us, by the way. It is. Athletic brand of the year yeah. is going to New Balance. And this brand is just everywhere, doing yeah. things with everyone, doing these great collaborations. But I think there's something just about this gray New Balance sneaker that really, Sheena, this was a fashion moment. Oh my gosh, I'll talk about a brand that's involved. I mean, this year was the first time they did a Black History Month collection, which was really cool. So they're finding ways to redefine themselves, but also to keep their heritage, which is really neat. So here to talk to us a little yeah. bit about holiday dressing, how to feel festive. Yeah, how to feel festive. We have Carrie Meekle Reed. She's the creative director of the Style Room powered by Zappos, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about that. So welcome, Carrie. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. We're betting that most of our viewers tonight are probably wearing their pajamas or maybe sweatpants. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what advice you're giving your shoppers on how to feel festive right now, but still stay comfortable? Yeah, well, at the Style Room, we're really trying to be equal parts aspiration and education. So we're thinking of our stories through the lens of versatility, ease, longevity. So, um, and thinking about the things that we're kind of wearing from day to day, um, some options could be, you know, wearing an active wear, high-waisted active wear pant with a, you know, with a tank and an oversized blazer. You can go out the door, you know, with some cool sneakers on. Um, there's some great, you know, matching sweats that you can wear, throw a trench coat over it. So it's really all about fashion meeting function. I am loving the idea of dressing up sweatpants. Brand of the year Brand is going year. to comfort brands. Carrie, can you tell us a little bit about what your shoppers think of these brands, of, of these comfort brands right now? Yeah, I think these brands are, are perfect for the moment. I think people are looking for ease. Um, and I think our customer is of the mindset that they need things that serve multiple purposes. What are the other footwear trends and brands that you're seeing your shoppers, um, what are they into right now? Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't think there'll be some bi any big surprises here, but I think it's athletic shoes and, and sneakers. Slides or statement slippers, sophisticated slippers, I think that's what um, our customer is looking for right now. And some sports sandals. Again, it, it's, it's all about fashion meeting function. Absolutely, you bring up a good topic, slippers. Slippers are back, it's cold. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about slippers. I think slippers, you know, serve, you know, our day-to-day -day lives right now. And I think also they're just a great giftable item. Um, the one that has kind of been my tried and true and will continue to be one in my closet is the Ugg Scafette. Um, but I'm loving, I have in my cart right now, I think it's called the Vince Kayla. It's a kind of a shearling slide. So you can have a little extra um, glitz to your day. For the past few months, I think people may have been thinking that they can go shoeless in the house. It's actually not good for your feet, right? No. So if you can find something to wear around the house that still makes you feel good, slippers are the way to go. And now that it gets cold, you wanna add socks, right? Are you seeing some trend, uh, some trends around socks? There's two trends that I kind of really like in socks. There's a brand we have called Happy Socks. So if you're kind of looking for a little bit of color in your life, um, you could throw on a pair of those, or you could kind of go the other end. There's some beautiful, you know, cashmere, uh, cashmere socks from a brand called Skin, you know, in neutral kind of um, soothing color palette. Are we, is everyone getting for the holidays, is everyone just going to be getting slippers and socks this year? What, <laughs> this could be the season, the holiday season of just the slippers and socks. What are you seeing and what are you recommending to your shoppers? You know, an easy choice and a great gift is always PJs, socks, and slippers, right? 
Iberge, Cosabella, La Perla. Um, and then, like I was saying before, outside of the traditional um, slipper brands, you know, brands like Dolce Vita, um, Kate Spade, um, and Vince all have, you know, kind of some of these different variations and sophisticated slippers that have come out. Carrie, you bring up a good point that I think this sort of at-home look is getting so much more sophisticated and people are having fun with it. And I love that. Yeah. Uh, what We are very curious, what are you going to be wearing for the holidays? Well, it, it kind of brings to mind two stories that we brought to life in the style room. One is everyday decadence, right? So we're with our close friends and our family in our, our quarantine bubble. You know, you could throw on a, a beautiful earring, a headband, um, you know, a dress, you know, some sort of little touch that kind of brings a little glitz to whatever sort of um, celebration you'll be having with your family. Um, and then I think there's another story, one that we're, we called Easy Formal, and it's really all about ease and for versatility. So it can be an oversized blazer and a soft trouser um, and a slip-on loafer so that you feel dressed, but you also feel like you know, you can be comfortable in your home doing all of these things. So true. Well, thank you. You've given us inspiration. We really appreciate you joining us to talk about this. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Carrie. Happy holidays. Timberland is getting the sustainability award this year. They wrote the book right. on sustainability. So it's like, in a lot of ways, this award is long overdue. Retailer of the year is going to the Whitaker Group, yes. and that is head by James Whitner. Yes. The reason that I think, you know, James has had such a good year, he's really leaned into philanthropy and community service. He's really made his his social media and his stores a, a platform for advocacy, a safe space. You know, it was a really hard year to launch a brand, but we had a really exciting launch that we're honoring this year. This designer, Alfredo Piferi, his new line, it is a vegan line. Amazing. And he yeah. is proving, once again, that this can be done. Yeah. Sustainability, sustainable luxury shoes, they can be done. They In can a be pandemic, done. nonetheless. We have two awards for Hall of Fame yeah. this year. Dick Johnson of Foot Locker is receiving one. You know, Dick Johnson is such, he is such an inspirational leader, can I just say. He's running like this really big enterprise, but he always says this really humble thing, I'm just a sneaker salesman. That's his leadership style. That's how you become a legend. And our other Hall of Fame award winner is Sergio Rossi. Yeah. Now, Sergio Rossi, the designer, passed away earlier this year in Italy, and it was a really sad moment for the fashion and footwear community. Sergio Rossi was known for establishing some of the quality standards and the production standards and really bringing the idea of designer luxury footwear yeah. to the modern era. So style influencer of the year, like I have a feeling that this is the moment <laughs> a lot of you have been waiting for. Miss Cardi B. She's getting awards left and right yeah. for music, for but we wanted to honor her, her style. Yeah. Which is so innovative, so risk-taking, so symbolic and iconic. She thinks outside of the box. She's willing to just do whatever and make a statement. She's an, an incredible woman that is deserving of this award, that looks great, that takes takes risks. This is a really big crossover fashion year for Cardi. We're gonna go back to Charlie and talk a little bit about these moments that he had on set, shooting these moments oh for God, the FNAs. Amazing stuff. Uh, he got to spend some time with the one and only, our style influencer of the year, Cardi B. It was high energy all the way. What you see is what you get. Everything that she gives on social media, she gave to us during the uh, photo shoot. John Legend is opening our show. He's going to do a few moments. You got to spend some time with him in LA on our shoot. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we were in his Beverly Hills home. It's huge, stunning, beautiful. You can tell he doesn't shop at Target. One thing that you're not going to see, of course, in the uh, photo shoot, but at the piano in between takes, he played for us, he did some singing. It was wonderful. Wow, so you got a private concert with John Legend in his home. I'm officially jealous. I know, we were saying we miss you, Charlie. We're like fawning over you not being in New York with us. And you're in LA getting private concerts by John Legend, on set with Cardi B, like playing with her daughter's doll. Like what's really going on, Charlie? 
I hate to brag, but it's the LA Live. <laughs> we have two brands of the year that yes. are being honored. Both There's a theme. Both of, a of theme. these brands are really important. So the first one is Crocs. Crocs really showed up for the healthcare heroes. I mean, they've been the big heroes of COVID. And I think literally the message was, hey, we have thousands of pairs of shoes and want to give them to healthcare workers. Have at it. They have a really big presenter this year. Oh, yes, I'm Priyanka, so excited. Priyanka yeah. Chopra is presenting to Crocs for brand of the year. So excited. She had a very clever way of wearing them for an evening such as this, an awards night. Yeah. Let's take a look at what she, how she wore her Crocs. <laughs> so the Emerging Talent Award this year is going to Andrea Wazen, right? Yes. She is from Beirut, from Lebanon, with the explosion in Beirut. Her store and her offices were completely destroyed. And she just said, we are going to just clean up and we are going to rebuild and we are going to just start anew. And she actually for spring 2021, dedicated her entire collection to all of the architecture, the historic architecture of the city of Beirut. Our other brand of the year yeah. is going to a big favorite, <laughs> Birkenstock. Yes. I am the biggest Birkenstock fan. We were talking about this. Ever. You're like the poster child for Birkenstock right now. They've done all of these fashion collaborations over the past few years and it's reignited this interest. But then you actually get into a pair of Birkenstocks. Man, this feels good. This feels good. Congratulations so, to cheers. Birkenstock. Cheers. Cheers to Birkenstock. Congratulations. Well deserved. Okay, Shannon, I think it is time for the show. Listen, I've had so much fun hanging out with you tonight. This was a blast. I can't wait to see the show. I'm so excited. Thank you for joining us for the Red Carpet Show, brought to you by The Style Room, powered by Zappos, and enjoy. Enjoy. Cheers. Hello, I'm John Legend. Welcome to the 2020 FNAAs. Tonight's show will feature some of the biggest names in fashion, sports, and entertainment, including Cardi B, Rihanna, Jaden Smith, John Legend, Priyanka Chopra Jonas, Jason Momoa, Christian Louboutin, Andre Leon Talley, Virgil Abloh, Iris Apfel, Manolo Blahnik, Tommy and Dee Hilfiger, Katy Perry, Amina Muwadi, Jean Vito Rossi. Tonight, we'll be traveling around the world to Paris, Tokyo, London, LA, Cologne, Beirut, Rome, and more. Tonight's show is dedicated to the memory of Tony Shea. Once again, John Legend. Good evening, and welcome to the 2020 Footwear News Achievement Awards. It is my honor to open tonight's virtual show from my home in beautiful Los Angeles. Now, I am sure you have all been a part of many virtual gatherings this year. We spent much of the year staring into a computer screen as we watched a wildly unpredictable and challenging 2020 unfold before our very eyes. Amidst a devastating pandemic, cascading economic hardships, and a renewed movement for racial justice, 2020 called upon all of us to focus on the things that matter, to reimagine what work and life could look like to take a hard look at the way we live, not just how we behave personally, but how we allow our fellow human beings to be treated and to reconsider what we owe to one another. This year has been uncertain in many ways, but we end it with renewed hope for a just future and an unwavering commitment to make it so. It feels a bit strange to celebrate in these moments that remain uncertain when divisions can feel deep and intractable but it is in exactly these moments that we must celebrate those who are doing the work. Seasons of hard work must be leavened with moments of joy and celebration. Tonight, we're going to do just that 
as we celebrate 16 incredible artists, brands, and leaders from around the world through their unique stories, their diverse styles, and their unflinching commitment to social justice, this international community of creatives is cutting a clearer path for all of us to truly see one another and to see ourselves more fully. This is a group that not only has triumphed in tough times, but also has helped to strengthen the soul of our common humanity. And though we'll still be seeing one another from behind our computer screens, these visionaries are giving us reasons to walk, to run, to put on our best looks and give them hell. So no, 2020 has not been perfect, but in its weird, twisted way, I hope it has begun to show us how to walk together down a new and better road. For tonight, footwear's biggest night, wherever you are in the world, we invite you to kick off your heels or put on your best pair, grab a cocktail, and enjoy the 2020 FNAAs. Here's your host, Michael Atmore. <laughs> Thank you so much, John Legend. What a beautiful way to start tonight's show. And as John so elegantly said, we do need to celebrate this incredible year. These awards have often been called the Oscars of the shoe industry. And for the past 34 years, despite some intense media coverage, they were largely a private event. But tonight, all of that's changed as we take you on a trip around the world to find the best and the brightest. Of course, there have been many points in 2020 when celebrations seemed virtually impossible. The challenges were just so enormous. But as the year unfolded, we also witnessed powerful stories of triumph, activism, and great leadership. So tonight I wanna to direct your attention to 16 of those stories that really define this year. Singled out by the talented editors of Footwear News, the FNAA winners represent that silver lining to a very challenging 2020. to be a part of the distinguished voices to represent the Nike Dunk. The Nike Dunk is by far one of the Swoosh's most recognizable sneakers as a younger generation has arrived to embrace the history once again. You know, I very much believe that the Nike Dunk is one of those special shoes that cross-pollinates between uh, an athletic icon, but also like a culturally relevant canvas over the years. It has shifted from college basketball to skate, skate culture and now solidified itself as a streetwear staple. Um, congratulations to Nike and the team for ultimately fostering an icon to be born. It's my absolute pleasure on behalf of the Footwear News to present the award for Shoe of the Year to Nike Dunk. Hi everyone, my name is Phil McCartney and I have the honour of working for the footwear product merchandising team here at Nike. Uh, I want to record a quick video to say how much we appreciate the honour that Footwear News has bestowed on us uh, with the Shoe of the Year award for this year, the Dunk. A shoe that has soul, it has culture, it has history, uh, so to get that recognition from all of you uh, is incredibly rewarding. I also want to make sure that I call out the team uh, for their passion, their pride, the amount of time and effort that they poured into the shoe. And finally, just thanks to all of our partners who brought this uh, shoe to life, who helped us really tell those stories and really connect to who's really important here, which are our consumers. So look, amazing honor for us. Uh, we thank you um, and look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you.
Aloha Footwear World, I'm Jason Momoa and I'm on set in Toronto shooting my season two of my Apple show C2 and uh, it is my honor to present Birkenstock with the Footwear News Brand of the Year 2020. It's, uh, it's a big honor for me because um, Birkenstock's been pretty close to my family my whole life. Um, I think I had my first pair when I was 13. I met my wife, she had hers on. You know, I wear them all over the world, they feel like home. You can't get 13s in pink, but you can if you love Birkenstock like I do. On my show, I make all of my shoes that I fight in do stunts in. The Birkenstocks. We take them and mold them around, and depending on the character that I play, we build our own look um, based around Birkenstocks. So these are some uh, designs that we made, and it has stacks in there and then these will be uh, the new ones and uh, this will be for season two and still the same thing they got knife holders in there and uh, they're very uh, you know eclectic for the characters that I play so um, every day I'm in them and I live in them and I'm very I'm very thankful and um, congratulations for the brand of the year 2020 I love you Hello. Thank you so much, Jason. You, you touched me with your warm introduction. Thank you very much. So first of all, I want to thank uh, Michael Epmore and his editorial staff uh, Footwear News for this Brand of the Year award. It is very special for my team and myself to receive this kind of recognition for the third time. This year was a very tough one, a year of loss and chaos, but there's also hope, a growing green awareness which has turned into a global movement. There is a community of people who wear Birkenstock and who live the Birkenstock lifestyle. And all of you are welcome to join the Birkenstock family. My special thanks goes to our dealers who passionately spread our values around the world. Birkenstock have a purpose. They have this unique orthopedic function. Even if you hate the look of our product, you may fall in love with our functionality. Once again, a big hug to Footwear News for this award. It gives us even more reasons to concentrate on our core values, which really capture the zeitgeist of our time. Thank you very much. able to make a different spin on things like her pumps but they're made out of mesh so unexpectedly feminine and sexy I was just ooing and aahing and I posted them on my social medias and everyone was like I need these shoes I have so much respect for how she chose to seek inspiration in times of trials. It is my pleasure on behalf of Footwear News to present the award for Emerging Talent to Andrea Watson. Thank you so much Footwear News and Michael Atmore for this amazing opportunity. I can't believe I'm actually awarded Emerging Designer of the Year. This is really unreal considering what a year I've been through. As you might already know, I'm a Lebanese designer based in Beirut and Beirut has been through so much this past year between the economic collapse, the revolution, the pandemic, and to top it all off, there was the explosion that ruined absolutely all the city. And I felt so sad and so angry at that time that I felt I really need to put that energy and all this emotion into designing. Everything was completely gone. There's no, there's no trace of anything left. And I think that these are situations in life where you're put to decide, should I give up and should I stop or should I just grab myself together, do the best I can, because at the end of the day, this is what life is. I mean, you have to give the best that you can and to be recognized by such an amazing publication and such an amazing team of Footwear News is more than amazing. Thank you so much. I just also want to thank my family for being so supportive. I want to thank Shayna also, who's an amazing PR who helped me through these past few years. And thank you, Michael Atmore again and Footwear News and Beirut, this award is for you. Thank you. 
Describe 2020 in one word. Stinko. I met Iris at the Carlisle Hotel in a penthouse. Where else would you meet Iris? What are you most proud of this year? That I'm still here. She's an icon. She also happens to be my best friend. I think Iris has seen it all and done it all, and yet she still finds everything brand new. How did you stay creative during the quarantine? Well, you stay creative if you are creative and you let all the juices run. It wasn't easy, but I decided that it was the sink or swim. She's, she's the most honored person that I know. I think Iris shows that the wisdom of the past matters, but the curiosity of the now is what's really important. So tell me what you think about Zoom meetings. I think about what? Zoom meetings. Having a meeting online, like right now, Zoom meeting. Oh. Well, it's not my favorite pastime. It gets a little bit trying. On the subject of technology, I have to admit, I live in the late 17th century. Her take on, on everything is just her own and so original. There's really nothing that comes out of her head that you've heard before. It's all Iris all the time, so it's brilliant. What What is your uniform in quarantine? Well, I have a large variety of robes, <laughs> and I go from one to another, and I change my bedroom slippers. Hello, I'm Matt Meyer, owner and regenerative renegade of Thousand Hills Lifetime Grazed Grass-Fed Beef. And it's my pleasure and honor today to present the Footwear News Sustainability Leadership Award to Timberland. Timberland made a bold and courageous move when they decided to source hides from farms that have implemented regenerative agriculture practices. Regenerative agriculture has the potential to solve many of today's biggest issues. So congratulations, Timberland. I'll now hand it over to Colleen and Tracy for a few more words. Thank you for that introduction, Matt. We are equally proud of our partnership with you. Hi everyone, I'm Colleen Vian, Sustainability Director for Timberland. We are so honored and thank Footwear News for recognizing Timberland with the 2020 Sustainability Leadership Award. At Timberland, we truly believe that a greener future is a better future. But these words only matter if you put resources and actions behind them. Corporate social responsibility has never been a silo for Timberland. It's embedded in the way we do business every day. The more we have people aware and with the knowledge, the more we can build desire to make a change. And it's going to take all of us to make that change. Don't settle. Do something. Even, even activities at a very small level, if everyone does them collectively, make a difference. Do what you can. Build what you can. And try to work together. At Timberland, we're incredibly excited about the journey ahead as we look to a greener and more equitable future for all. Thank you to all of our partners and to VF, without whom we would not be the brand we are today. Once again, thank you and good night. So I want to raise my glass to all the heroes for nature in the footwear industry and beyond. to present this Footwear News Award to someone very special and incredibly talented who's forging the way in sustainable footwear. For us at Browns, conscious is at the forefront of our minds when searching for new brands and this new designer embodies the key elements of the new luxury, sustainability, craftsmanship, and design. And despite what has been a challenging year, Alfredo's launched P30 with what he is calling vegan shoes made divine. And we love that the collection is designed with kindness at its core. As we say, it's cool to be kind. So congratulations, Alfredo. We are so proud to call you a member of the Browns family. And I'm so excited to present you with the Footwear News Launch of the Year Award. Congratulations, Alfredo. Hi, I am Alfredo Casadei, founder and creative director at P3. Since I remember, I've always been fascinated with our shoes, and this fascination pretty quickly became a life dream. This award today really gave me the strength to continue on this path. 
I would like to take this opportunity to thank a few people today. First of all, I would like to thank Michael Atmore and all the guys at Footwear News that have been super supportive with me in the last year. I would also like to thank Christopher Suarez for believing in Pifri from day one, Brown's Fashion CEO Ollie Rogers for her introduction to where today at this award. Alberto Liveros, that have been the first buyer to place an order and such an enthusiastic fan of the brand. But also I would like to thank Level Shoe Dubai and On Pedder, as it still feels unreal to launch with such prestigious account and I couldn't be more humble and grateful. I would also like to thank Georgina Welch for her incredible work and to be the best business partner I could have wished for. And last but not least, I would like to thank all my first customers and the one to come. You are the true P3 believers. Thank you. I think I really hype my dad up when someone's either not hyping him up or I just feel like it. Um, a few days before, like a day or two before, he was like, do you want to meet Carmel Harris? And I was like, yes. It was probably one of the best experiences ever. She said, don't ever ask, don't ever ask to take command, just do it. Just be your own leader. Don't ask and just leave the path. Is that he does retail concepts all across the country. It's it's pretty impressive to a lot impressive to a lot of people. Like they were like, oh my goodness. But I think when my I see my dad's the community work and my mom as well, it just is really like inspiring. He explained it, like he explains the concept and then mentioned that Cardi B won something. And then that's when it clicked in my head, like, oh, this is an award award. <laughs> Congratulations to my dad and the Whitaker Group for winning Retailer of the Year. Congratulations, Dennis. Thank you, baby. Um, this is incredible. Thank you, Footwear News, for honoring us with the Footwear News Achievement Award for Retailer of the Year. Um, it's an honor uh, to accept this award on behalf of myself and the Whitaker Group. 2020 has been an incredible year to innovate the space of retail and stand up for uh, stands up for the people who we believe in in, in our community. Um, evolving retail and, and keeping our community at the center of it is something we've been focused on for years. So it's it's it's, it's a huge it's a huge accomplishment for us to be for us to be uh, recognized for the work that we so passionately love to do and uh, and just like literally our whole team. Is, is thankful and grateful, and we look forward to continue to stay stay at it and keep pounding. Thank you for Wear News. While the world struggled with the pandemic, a revolution was afoot. Triggered by the police murders of George Floyd in broad daylight and Breonna Taylor in her own home, these traumas were just two examples in a 400 year long history of black Americans being killed at the hands of law enforcement. These killings made clear to the general public what black folks already knew. Racism is real, it is ugly, and it is woven into the systems that govern our everyday lives. They ignited a new commitment from people all over the world to end the violence and destruction of systemic racism. But if the last few months have taught us anything, it is how powerful and essential it is for us to come together for a common cause. Led by an incredible community of black leaders, we have seen people from all over the world join the fight for justice, equality, and fairness. We have seen artists and activists, teachers and students, creators and storytellers stand side by side to create the future we deserve. The work is far from over. There are people whose lives are in danger simply because of who they are. As artists and tastemakers, we have the opportunity and responsibility not only to curate experiences and spaces where all people are safe and welcome, but also to join with black, brown, indigenous, and LGBTQ leaders who have been on the vanguard of this revolution for so long. Tonight, FN celebrates the work of so many great artists who are taking action through their art, standing shoulder to shoulder with those who push forward policies of liberty and justice for all.
2020 was the year that you had to make a decision as a brand. And, and whether it was related to the shoes or the messaging, you had to make a decision. Standing on the sidelines was not gonna work this year. It was no longer sexy to just be quiet and stay safe. You had to be bold. You had to, to stand for something this year or you were gonna be left behind. And, and, and we meant it. The executives in footwear meant it. The consumers meant it. What do you stand for? That was what 2020 was about. We've seen so many brands this year say what was controversial a year ago, Black Lives Matter. And I think when you say that, you've now, you've opened up the floodgates. We have something to hold you accountable. In a year, I can ask you, what have you done to, to prove that Black Lives Matter? So that gives me hope. There's um, obviously a lot, a lot of work that remains. There's, we're not where we need to be. We're not even close, but I think you have to start somewhere. And we, we've really gotten a nice running start. Meet. NYU? Yeah, Joseph yes. Joseph Ferrara's class? Oh yes, in Joseph yeah, Ferrara's yeah, yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. How many years ago was that? Five, I want to say five years. Where did the time go? I came in and I was super happy that another black person was there. Uh -huh. I, at that point, I had grown tired of being the only one in the room. I felt uh, immediately protected and like I felt the camaraderie because we were like not scared to rough the feathers. And then I was like also shocked that you were from Canada. So I was like trying to place it. I was like, this is Alabama? What is this twang? <laughs> <laughs> How's your 2020 been? I mean, you know it's been hard. Yeah. But I think that I've definitely used this time to be more self-reflective. You know, a lot of that that was going on in the past, like with the red carpets and like, you know, Met Gala, God knows I love a Met Gala, but like, you know, it's distracting yeah. a lot of times from like what, A, who you are as a creative and B, who you want to be in the world and C, how you're actually running your business and how you're trying to grow it. So I think for me, I've been like really introspective about it and saying like, how do I want to spend my time on this planet? Like, what do I want to be? Like, what do I want people to remember me for? Probably not a handbag. Probably not. Talking about 2020, you're now getting this person of the year award at Footwear News. To come out and shine in 2020 is, 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 is miraculous in itself, but the way you did it is so commendable. The real reason why everybody's tracking you right now is because you've asked those questions and put tangible actions behind it, especially with the 15% pledge. So how did that come about? I think like with George Floyd being murdered, I was just so over it. I was just so over everyone just like saying whatever they were saying, you know, all these companies. And I think for me as a business owner, I was just tracking like how these black businesses were being decimated. They were just literally like closing left, right and center. They weren't getting any financing. They weren't getting anything. No one gave a shit. Yeah, 70% didn't get PPP. Most of them don't get bank loans. There's no VC money, none of that. And I was just like, look, if these, act if these retailers actually actually wanted to support black people, this would be like one very basic thing they could do. Yeah. You know, committing to buying 15% of their products from black owned businesses. So they thought they were gonna put up a black square, get away with it, Yeah. Um, continue, continue with the same cycles, hope another George Floyd doesn't happen so that they don't have to be reactive again. Right. And here you come saying, here, sign this. Yeah, because it's an actual contract. contract yeah. Multi-year contract right. with audits. You know, standing here with you now and you getting this award last year and me getting this award this year, like we're the adults in the room, you know? Mm -hmm. You can't wait for anyone else to come along and make the change that you want. You really have to do it yourself. Right. And so I think like getting an award like this, it puts more responsibility on my shoulders. You know, that's how I feel. Yeah. Because you know, truly, I love fashion. Obviously you do too. I think this industry is really tough. It's been bastardized in a lot of ways. And I really want to see it actually be really progressive and good. What you said is key, is that no one else is gonna do the work. It's like when you, um, you're in your office or your store or something like that, you see a piece of debris on the floor. Better pick that up. Better pick it up. Better pick right? that up. So. Yeah. I'm Baron 
Davis, and it is with great honor that I introduce Dwayne Edwards for this year's Footwear News Icon Award for Social Impact. Let me tell you about Dwayne. Being from Inglewood, California, right, in the heart of South Central, having a dream, a dream to design footwear, not only footwear, but for the most iconic brand, for the most iconic sports figure, the Jordan brand. But the thing that he's most amazing for was taking this opportunity and all the things that he learned and built Penn Soul Academy. He's built an institution and he's built a school. Penn Soul being a place for the kids who are just like Dwayne in Inglewood, all across America, who come from marginalized communities to allow them to have the opportunity to live out their dreams. I, for one, am a huge fan and an admirer. So I present this award to you uh, on behalf of the Footwear News and the Icon Award for Social Impact. Ladies and gentlemen, Dwayne Evans. Man, this, this is an amazing honor. Um, I never looked at, looked at myself as an activist or what we do as activism. I've always looked at it as just what we're supposed to do. You know, our mission is to make this industry better, better than when we entered it. And our mission is to, to make sure this industry does more. Um, this, this award really inspires us to do more for gen future generations to come. You know, our, our purpose is to show this industry what could happen if you invest into your consumers and you view them and value them more than just being consumers. Uh, thank you Footwear News for this award. Uh, thank you to Jordan Brand for allowing me to fly. Uh, thank, you the, thank you to the Pencil family for, for your loyalty and, and, and your passion and love for, for giving back and, and doing all the things you've done for, for us. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone else who believed in me, believed in Pencil, believed in the work that we're doing. Um, this, this award is not just for me, this award is for all of us. And I want to thank you all very much for this opportunity. So we've often joked that there is this energy that takes place in this room and bringing just each year's best together produces this dynamic which you really can't anticipate, you can't predict, but once they're all together in that room, some crazy things happen. So we've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of fun things, a lot of unpredictable moments, and some just downright crazy stuff. I think the craziest moment was, I can't do this part though, I'll get sued. Let's take a look at some of the top moments of the FNAAs over the years. Tom Ford, Kate Moss, velvet cigarette pants, his breakout moment at Gucci, and we got him for Designer of the Year. Well, at that time, I was still in high school, but um, I'm sure he was impeccably dressed. Oh, like mother, like daughters. Those Brinkley girls are beautiful, they're stylish, and they own it. It was just iconic. It was quite the mother-daughter moment. This was a early aughts dream to see those two walk the red carpet. I spoke to them and Paris is just Paris. You can't look away. I mean, no one could pull off what he was wearing. He had some type of like Dior sash on and a hat and he just went all out and it was a style influence award and that's, that's what we wanted. He was really humble. He really paid tribute to the Latino community for all of the support that he had and inspiration. Glad we got her because this was before she was Haley Bieber and it was a big moment and it's living on. She was presented by Tabitha Simmons with the Style Influencer of the Year Award and Haley Baldwin planted a kiss on Tabitha's baby bump and even today we still get plenty of likes on Instagram. Cuba Gooding Jr. was in a spirited mood, I, I describe it as. He came off and he kissed Iris on the hand, so I feel like he saved himself a little bit there with the crowd. This was peak Gossip Girl moment. I remember so well, she 
stood up there and she said, Christian, you are the man of my dreams. Almost was in tears up there talking about how his shoes had basically changed her life. Carrie Bradshaw in the flesh. This was my first week at work and I did not know what to expect, so that's when I knew the FNAAs were something special. She is New York, she is shoes, and she was on our stage. So he walked up there and he said, hey, if you don't like profanity-filled rants that end with presidential bids, then you might want to go to the bathroom. This was something, this was a moment. Um, it was about a 20 minute long moment, and he just gave Honestly, like a look into his brain, which it's not something I can keep up with. I'd love to be Rihanna for a day. It's just badass. Uh, Rihanna, she just was everything you'd expect. Stunning, funny. Cuba was trying to get to her too, but he didn't get a kiss on the hand. That's for sure. Thank you so much, Michael. Well, hello, I'm Andre Leon Talley, as you well know. Everyone knows me, I am the number one UGG fan. In fact, you've seen me so many times on the front row in Fashion Weeks, when we had Fashion Weeks in the international global fashion centers, Paris, London, Milan, and Rome, wearing the classic UGG boot. I even have my own monogram UGG boots just so I feel that they are unique for me and no one can take them in case I'm at the gym and they try to slip into my locker. But you know, size 18, after all, it's not gonna fit everyone. It is my pleasure on behalf of Footwear News to present the award for Company of the Year to Deckers. Congratulations. Thank you so much. We are truly honored to be recognized in this way and so grateful for all the support we have had from the footwear community over the years. We have been on a journey the last four years to transform this company to one that is known for strong performance and for having a positive impact on the world. We believe that we have an opportunity and an obligation to do good as a result of doing well. Our employees logged more volunteer hours in a week than we did all of last year through our global Art of Kindness event. Of course, none of this would be possible if we didn't have such a dedicated and talented group of employees who put their passion into this business every day. We truly believe that we are better when we work together, and this is a demonstration of how that pays off. This recognition truly means the world to us. To everybody watching, please stay well, stay safe, and take care. I'm Priyanka Chopra Jonas, Crocs Global Brand Ambassador. Let me start by thanking Footwear News for the opportunity to share a few words and congratulate Crocs for being honored as 2020 Brand of the Year. 2020 has presented its fair share of challenges, but I couldn't be prouder to work with a values-driven organization like Crocs that embodies what it truly means to come as you are. Come as you are is all about being comfortable with your true self in all that you do. In addition to advocating for inclusivity and enabling self-expression, Crocs stepped up in the face of adversity to deliver comfort at a time when it was needed the most. At the onset of the pandemic, Crocs reinforced what it always knew. Doing the right thing was the right thing for the brand, its employees, and its community. Over the course of 45 days, Crocs donated more than 860,000 shoes to global frontline healthcare heroes. It's always important to me that I partner with brands that recognize they can do well by doing good for others. And I'm proud to work with a brand like Crocs that shares the same values that I do. And <laughs> before I go, I wanna encourage each and every one of you to be comfortable in your own shoes and to come as you are. Without further ado, I'm pleased to present the Footwear News 2020 Brand of the Year Award to Crocs and Crocs President Michelle Poole. Congratulations. Thank you, Priyanka, for such a wonderful introduction. 
It's our honor to work with global partners like you that represent the Crocs brand in such an authentic and meaningful way. Having been the outsiders for a long time, um, to be recognized by the industry, within the industry is really special. It's the cherry on the icing on the cake. Our brand actually um, has more reasons at the end of this year than it did at the beginning to, to believe in our future success. While we continue to deliver on what we do best, clogs, sandals, and personalization, we've also been able to strengthen our Come As You Are brand platform, encouraging everyone to be fearlessly unique and to be comfortable in their own shoes. Sometimes it's just about getting something going and getting moving. And then in the end, we had donated 900,000 pairs of shoes. On behalf of the entire Crocs team, I'm thrilled to accept this award. I would like to extend our gratitude to Footwear News for recognizing us as Brand of the Year. What advice would you have for a young designer starting out now? I think he should take up plumbing. <laughs> but you could be a very creative plumber. And plumbing is a very noble, noble, what is it, an art, a science? It's, it could be everything. It's, it's very important. Well, the cho I, I only have two choices. <laughs> to be positive or negative. And I'm a person that prefers to say that the glass is half full. Actually, I don't know if I, if that's the way I was, but I've been, during this pandemic, I've been training myself. When you think negative thoughts, you get to be a negative person and then you can't accomplish anything. News. Thank you so much for having us be a part of this year's award ceremony. I would like to thank Amina, of course, for being a part of this award, a part of this collaboration. For me, it was very important to take the elements that characterized Fenty and Rihanna's personality and style and filter my own feminine aesthetic through it. Julio, my deputy sheriff, thank you so much for everything that you do. Thank you for pushing forward everything that is a part of our brand. It has to come with this respect and trust of allowing someone to take you to places that uh, you might not have necessarily thought of going before. I think that is the foundation for really any good collaboration. It's a huge deal for us to be a part of this once again, and even a bigger achievement to have the Collaborator of the Year Award uh, with much love and respect and we can't wait to give you more. I would just like to thank Footwear News on behalf of myself, Fenty, Rihanna, and Amina Mawadi to say thank you for awarding us with this amazing achievement of Collaborators of the Year. Not a lot of people can say they share an award with Rihanna, so this one definitely has a special place in my heart. This is for the culture, this is for the kids, this is for all of our customers, our clientele, and um, our community. 
We love you guys and we can't wait to continue building this. We're so honored to have this and we can't wait to see if we can keep knocking this shit out year after year. FN Footwear News, what's up? It's me, Christian Crosby, and yo, I couldn't be more excited. I even got dressed up for you. I know it's formal. I got on my formal Live Life Nice hoodie, ready to rock and roll. Dick Johnson, Chairman, CEO, Foot Locker, Inc. This is your big day, baby. You're in the FNAA Hall of Fame, and I couldn't be more proud to induct you, my friend. Yo, you know what? I'm gonna do what I do at the games. Here we go. This is Footwear News. This is the FNAA. This is Dick Johnson's Hall of Fame Award. Locker has completely and utterly changed my life. My journey goes back with Foot Locker 10 plus years. Honestly, I started as a stock boy and then had to work my way up from there. But let me tell you something. One thing that always stood out to me at Foot Locker was it never felt like a company or a business. It felt more like a family. 10 plus years later, here I am as a vendor with Foot Locker. You guys believe in style. You believe in individuality. You believe in creators and you believe in your community. I'm living proof of that and I really truly appreciate it. Truly has changed my life. So Dick Johnson, my guy, I want to give you a big congratulations. You're a Hall of Famer now. Congrats. Congratulations, Dick, on your well-deserved recognition. Congratulations, Dick. Congratulations. Congratulations on your Hall of Fame award. Congratulations. Good to know that the footwear world is also recognizing you for things that we all already know. See the impact that you have had from the offices of Warsaw to Vienna to Midtown Manhattan and just the same level of drive, energy and leadership that have ultimately redefined our entire company culture as well as redefined the sneaker culture industry at large. We're so proud of all of your many accomplishments, but most inspired by how you are a peaceful warrior who leads with heart. Your leadership here in 2020 through COVID, through social injustice, and through just a, a very challenging and turbulent economy and has been phenomenal. We're very proud of the work you do with us and for us, and we thank you. Just how proud we are to have you as our leader. Our team really appreciates you. Uh, we honor you and Mary and your entire family for this incredible achievement. You'll always be a member of our Hall of Fame. You know, when you receive a call about a Hall of Fame award, it's a little bit of a bittersweet experience. My first reaction was, wow, I must have been doing this for a long time. Hello, team. It's great to be with you today to talk about you, our customers, and how we can improve our selling skills. Summer of 2020 showed us again how important and how integral youth culture is to our future. I'll get questions from people's kids that, hey, when is this shoe coming out? You know, let me go check our launch app. You know, the world has all come together. Sneakers are mainstream, right? Kamala Harris, you know, wearing her, her Chuck Taylors on stage. There is nothing like standing outside of a store in a mall or on a street and watching people just interact with our associates. And when they come out, if there's a bag in their hand, they're smiling. I'm surrounded by the best team in the business. To my Foot Locker family, thank you for all that you do. The work and the effort are tremendous. From a simple start in small town Wisconsin to leading this incredible team, I'm simply amazed at the journey and inspired by what is yet to come. It is truly an honor to join this Elite Hall of Fame Club and to be honored tonight among so many great brands, designers, and trailblazers. Congratulations to all, and thanks again to the team at Footwear News for this recognition. Hey, you know a lot has changed in our industry since the first edition of Footwear News hit desks in October 1945. At the time, most of our shoes were made here in the United States, and the rubber sole was this newfangled invention, but since that time, We've seen manufacturing diversify, move overseas, and we've seen the sneaker industry become a $300 billion business. We've also seen department stores take the place of mom and pop shops, 
And now the internet taking the place of department stores. It is safe to say that over the last 75 years, we have collectively experienced some really impactful and dramatic challenges. And now as we face some of our most significant challenges yet, I can tell you that for FDRA members, and we represent 95% of the industry, Fullware News is a must have resource. So I wanna say thank you to Michael and all the editors at Footware News for their partnership, for their collaboration, and for me personally, for their friendship. I have found so many opportunities to work alongside the entire team of Footware News to serve this industry that we know and love. And I wanna say thank you on behalf of myself and all of our members. And so now I'm gonna turn it over to the team who's gonna give you more information about the amazing history of Footware News. You know, I think there's a lot of talk about FN and how important it is to the industry, but I think when you reach a milestone like 75, you realize how much of that history you really documented. I mean, how much of the fashion industry was recorded in the pages of FN? I mean, it's astounding. I think if you look at the awards mix this year, you see that so many of the companies, so many of the individuals we're actually doing something way beyond making great product. So once that started, and once the industry really rallied around those people, many of whom are the winners tonight, we really saw a different, a different industry, if you will. An industry that was interested in pursuing something beyond just great product and profit. So it gave purpose to our anniversary. Happy 75th, Footwear News and to all the amazing people that we've covered through the years. Cheers. It's true, the shoe industry has evolved a lot over the past 75 years, and so has FN. Six years ago, we were primarily a weekly print magazine. Fast forward to 2020, and almost 10 million people visit footwearnews.com every month. The most important business stories, the hottest trends, the biggest stars, FN delivers it all. We were there 35 years ago when Nike signed a promising NBA rookie named Michael Jordan to a $2.5 million deal. And when Steph Curry was ready to launch a new shoe with Under Armour, he came to FN with the story. And since the rise of the luxury market, we've been among the first to discover some of the greatest talents in shoe design. Names like Manolo Blahnik, Stuart Weitzman, and Christian Louboutin. And more recently, we've championed young visionaries like Virgil Abloh and Amino Moati. In our cover stories, we profiled everyone. Rihanna, Kanye, Katy Perry, Gwen Stefani, DJ Khaled, Haley Bieber, Selena Gomez, Cardi B. They've all appeared on our cover. I've spoken with Jay Balvin in his Maybach sitting in the thickest of New York City traffic. And I've conversed with PJ Tucker in a quirky Oregon hotel surrounded by tens of thousands of dollars worth of sneakers from his personal collection. To bring you these incredible stories, the team at FN always steps up. Happy 75th, FN. Happy 75th, FN. Hi, I'm Christian Louboutin, and I'm here to wish a happy 75th anniversary to Footwear News. It's absolutely an honor and a privilege to be wishing you 75th anniversary. Hi, Footwear News. Happy 75th anniversary. It's Katie here. Just wanted to send you love and say congratulations on an incredible 75 years. We would just like to wish you a happy anniversary birthday. I wish you a very, very happy 75th footwear news. When I have to tell you at my tender age, when I'm invited to a party for someone of that age, I always feel like I'm going to a baby shower. <laughs> 75 years of footwear news. Goodness, what a milestone. Congratulations on 75 years of excellence and really honoring our industry. Happy birthday, Footwear News. And congratulations for this anniversary. And congratulations for your mission and for the fantastic team. I want to congratulate Footwear News on this very important 75th anniversary. A very happy 
75th anniversary to Footwear News. Just want to wish Footwear News an amazing 75th birthday. Happy birthday, FN. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary, Footwear News. Happy anniversary. Thank you, Michael. Congratulations, Footwear News, on your 75th anniversary. 75 years now, a lot of blessings, congratulations. Happy birthday, Lego. I, uh, I mean, I just come from being a fan of sneakers. I remember all those, those moments when I opened boxes, opened sneakers, waited in line. So I guess I'm just trying to recreate that emotion, recreate that nostalgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it's amazing to hear it's getting received well. You were talking to me earlier about like people caring about your designs and your shoes and kind of like as a designer, you kind of like design something and you kind of like walk away from it. Mm -hmm but then this kind of new transition that's happening, people like want to know what type of beanie you're wearing. And I want to know what type of shirt this is. And, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. um, how does that feel as a designer and a creator to go through that transition that you're going through right now? It's kind of like an evolution, you know, because just like you said, I was used to putting product on the table and then stepping away. Uh -huh. And then now the audience is asking me to come back to the table and then to sit down at that table and to maybe even have a discussion. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've been given this opportunity to express myself as an individual, which isn't um, given to that many. Um, do you mind if I ask another one? Please, yeah, it's, it's hard to answer them as, as I breathe fucking hard. <laughs> <laughs> up this. But let's do it, let's do it. Man. You design for so many different companies, mm -hmm. right? Now, when you do that, do you feel yourself being like, all right, let me speak the voice of the heritage of this company through my design? Uh -huh. Or are you trying to get yourself and your own personal narrative to come through on that design? You know, it's almost like this organic conversation because uh, a perfect example is the New Balance collaboration. Which is amazing. Thank you. Which is amazing. Thank you very much. Let's, just, let's take a quick pause so I can say how amazing <laughs> that collaboration is down to the watering of the plant, the New Balance logo coming out of it and getting like that. The whole vibe, the packaging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, dude, what the fuck, bro? Yo, I'm gonna, this is gonna turn you into a lover of heights, man. This is super crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I've taken so many people that have either, you know, stopped halfway, only gone up a certain amount. Exactly, and, and I was like, I'm not gonna be one of those people. <laughs> I'm lazy to be like, I've taken people that stopped halfway, but I took Jaden, man. He went, all he went the way. whole way. He didn't even stop in the middle to, to say this. <laughs> You've won Shoe Designer of the Year. Mm -hmm. This is a huge feat that people work so hard for, that you worked so hard for. Do you have any plans into the future of expanding into other products? Through these collaborations, I'm getting to play around with just product design. Mm -hmm. I have an industrial design background, which is ultimately product design. Um, I'm extremely versatile as a designer. So I think now that I've accomplish the goal of creating successful footwear and uh, I guess creating a little bit of a name for myself, I'd like to expand that into the world of product. So I guess uh, to everyone watching, if, you, if you're in a place to, to give anyone opportunity, you should do so because it really is this wall that a lot of people can't get over. And, and if you have that key to open that door, I think it can create you know, beautiful things and product. Cindy McLaughlin, World Silver Medalist, Olympian, and Team New Balance Track and Field Athlete. Since joining the New Balance family, they have been a great partner to me, and I am very proud to honor them tonight. Staying true to its heritage as an innovator in the running industry, New Balance elevated its stature in the ultra-competitive run category with the debut of its carbon fiber plate in the Fuel Cell RC Elite. Plus, you couldn't miss the seemingly endless run of New Balance collaborations. I'm so proud to present New Balance CEO, Joe Preston, with the Footwear News 2020 Athletic Brand of the Year Award.
Thank you, Sydney. You inspire us every day with your positive energy and extraordinary talent. And we're so proud to have you part of the New Balance family. On behalf of the 8,000 New Balance Associates worldwide, I'm excited to receive the Footwear News Athletic Brand of the Year Award for 2020. We are also fortunate to be part of such a dynamic and successful industry. Congratulations to our entire team at New Balance who earned this award with their hard work, passion, perseverance, and creativity in a year full of challenges. I am proud of the brand's purpose-led and inclusive culture and the work we've done this year to elevate our diversity and inclusion efforts through a strategic and collaborative approach. We pivoted and leveraged our domestic manufacturing to produce PPE and accelerated our digital transformation to quickly respond to the changing consumer needs. Thank you to Michael and the entire Footwear News team for the acknowledgement of Envy and for keeping the industry informed and connected. What about it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's stunning. If the heels weren't so high, I would buy me a pair, but I can't wear heels. So this one is Birkenstock. This is a more- Well, Birkenstock is Birkenstock. I mean, they're nice and comfortable and that's what they're made for. And so that's wonderful. Fashion is a kind of a, a discipline and people don't, I'm, I'm totally convinced people are very undisciplined. I mean, there's no reason you can stay at home and be in pajamas and look clean and neat. But most people just look like a mess. Buonasera a tutti. It's a great honor to be a part of this celebration tonight the celebration of an outstanding man, a true original, Mr. Sergio Rossi. It's been 70 years since our brand was created, and Sergio Rossi is still the symbol of femininity, quality, and timeless Italian style. When I first arrived at the brand over four years ago, I was shocked to learn a physical archive was never created, and I made it my goal to make this dream turn into reality. Two years ago, at Christmas time, I had the opportunity to show our archive to the great Sergio, who dedicated hours sharing memories and emotion. We are obsessed with our past, but always in function of the present and the future. I'm very proud to have a space where we can remember every day and be inspired by the vision of our Grande Maestro. Thank you to the Footwork News team for recognizing this incredible work today we will never stop being inspired by his vision. Grazie, Sergio. For 75 years, FN has chronicled the stories of so many incredible Italian shoemakers. They've always been the heart and soul of our industry. Among the best of the best, Sergio Rossi's legacy looms large. A true pioneer, Mr. Rossi learned the business from his father in the 40s and 50s and went on to create some of the most iconic styles of the 20th century. He inspired generations of designers with his namesake collections, some of which we just saw. But Sergio's most enduring legacy is his amazing family. When I sat down with his son Gian Vito at our summit last year, he recalled how home and the factory were one when he was growing up. It was just a big playground, he said, I had so many friends who worked with my father. Like his father and his grandfather before him, Gian Vito was hooked. He learned everything by watching Sergio in action, and father and son worked alongside each other until 1999. Gian Vito carried many of those powerful lessons from his father with him when he launched his own elegant brand in 2007. I can't think of anyone who embodies the spirit of Italy more than Gian Vito, and now his own children are following in his footsteps. What a fitting tribute to Sergio, a true shoe master. It is my honor to induct Sergio Rossi into FN's Hall of Fame. Please welcome Gian Vito Rossi. Footwear is in our family blood, and I learn everything I know from him. 
my father always stood out from the crowd with his charismatic, generous and courageous character. From his creative aesthetic to his particular attention to a shoe's fit quality. He had a gift for fine-tuning like no one else and could manipulate a shape by changing a single millimeter, ultimately perfecting and transforming a silhouette. On behalf of my father and my family, I want to thank Michael Atmore and the Footwear News team for this special recognition of his life and work. Bonsoir everyone, hello. I am glad to be here this evening at the Footwear News Achievement Award honoring a group of distinct personalities who are shaping the worlds of culture and design. And I am very happy to be the one introducing the Style Influencer of the Year, a hell of a woman, one of a kind, a singer, an entrepreneur, an activist, and a mother. She stands and fights for what she believes in, for her freedom, her liberty of speech, and her authenticity to everything. She's a force. She speaks her own language, the opposite of politically correct, which is so rare nowadays. The one and only Cardi B. So I would like now to raise a toast to congratulate the Footwear News Style Influencer of the Year, Cardi B. Oh, this is my song. Ooh, I didn't even I know it. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, coronavirus. I like patience there. Go back. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know why I do this. You know, I'm scared of heights. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am so honored for you guys making me the um, style influencer of the year. You know, I be trying to give, I be trying to give yeah, a different variety. You know what I'm saying? I might do a Birkin with a bathing suit, and then I just might do the latest Louis Vuitton uh, a leather jacket. I like, I like, to, you know, I like to be raunchy and I like to be chic and I like to be elegant. I like to be, I don't know, like I just. I get, I get bored with just doing one thing. So it's like when I do sexy, sexy too much, I get bored. When I do chic too much, I get a little bored. When I do sporty and I do it too much, I get bored. So I'm happy that uh, people like all my looks. Thank you very much. I wish I could have gave y'all more looks this year. But Bobby, uh, Bobby, you's a hating ass bitch who didn't let me get these some looks. Thank you. If y'all think I'm gonna cut all y'all pieces. Cut me a slice too. <laughs> oh shit. Y'all was hating on my cake. That's why it happened. I'm just glad. Is it good? That would have been the. And she would have repassed. Let's take a look. So I'm not really good at goodbyes, but I thought I'd give that duty to someone. Yeah. I'm really not good at goodbyes. I'm not very practiced at saying goodbye, I guess. I, I just leave. So it's been an incredible night, and I want to thank all of our winners and presenters. No, Matt, that, now I'm just saying goodnight. That's a cheat. Before you toss it, just give me that bit. Oh my god. No. You can cut whatever you, I don't know. It's been an incredible night in an incredible year. I'm not great at saying goodbye, so I'm gonna turn it over to my best friend. Take it away, Iris. Good night, everybody. It was lovely being with you. I hope you had as good a time as I did. And we look forward to seeing you again at our virtual gala. Thank you.